So for those of you who don't know, the Cunningham Medal is the Academy's premier award, and it's given every three years to a member of the Academy who has distinguished themselves both academically and in the furtherance of the aims of the Academy. Previous awardees include Sir William Wilde, Seamus Heaney, Dervila Donnelly, and Professor Nicholas Canny. So this year's award um, is being given to Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell in recognition of her research, wide contribution to academia, public engagement, and her international leadership in science. And I now call on Professor Catherine Godson, the Secretary for Science in the Academy, to read a citation for Dame Jocelyn. Thank you, Mary. Good evening. Professor Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell has made an exceptional contribution to society through her research in astronomy, her teaching, academic leadership, and public engagement. Jocelyn was born in Lurgan County, Armagh, the eldest of Alison and Philip Bell's four children. Her father was an architect who helped design the Armagh Planetarium, and through her visits there, she developed a fascination with astronomy. She attended the preparatory department of Lurgan College. At that time, boys could study technical subjects, but girls were expected to study subjects such as cooking and cross-stitch. Jocelyn was able to study science only after her parents and others challenged the school's policies. After primary school, she attended the Mount School, a Quaker girls boarding school in York. There she encountered a formidable influence, her physics teacher, Mr. Tillett, leading her to conclude about physics. You do not have to learn lots and lots of facts. You just learn a few key things and then you can apply and build and develop from these. He was a really good teacher and showed me actually how easy physics was. Her interest in science led her to study physics at Glasgow. During her subsequent postgraduate study at Cambridge, she made a major discovery. In November 1976, she discovered the first pulsar, previously unknown objects in the universe. Working at the Mullard Radio Astronomy Laboratory, she discovered several pulsars over the next few months. This groundbreaking scientific discovery eventually earned the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1974 for her PhD supervisor, Anthony Hewish, and the astronomer, Martin Ryle. This was a controversial decision of the Nobel Committee. Exclusion of Bell Burnell was frequently criticized in the astronomy community. In 1977, she commented, I believe it would demean Nobel Prizes if they were awarded to research students, except in very exceptional cases, and I do not believe this is one of them. She would later state that the fact that I was a graduate student and a woman together demoted my standing in terms of receiving a Nobel Prize. After her PhD studies in Cambridge, she moved to the University of Southampton and assisted in the design of the first one to 10 million electron volt gamma ray telescope. In 1974, she moved to the Mullard Space Science Laboratory to work on the RL5 satellite. She became professor of physics at the Open University in 1991 and was appointed Dean of Science at the University of Bath in 2001. Professor Bell Burnell has been an exemplary role model and advocate for underrepresented groups throughout her career. She is one of the founders of the Athena Swan scheme to address gender inequality in higher education and research. This scheme has had a transformative in impact with over 800 institutions and academic departments receiving Athena Swan Awards since 2015. Her generosity, both of spirit and materially, is legendary. In 2018, she was awarded the Breakthrough Prize in Fundamental Physics and pledged the full 2.3 million pound prize fund to support graduates from underrepresented minorities and those from disadvantaged backgrounds who wish to study physics. Since 2018, she has been Chancellor of University of Dundee and visiting academic at Mansfield College, University of Oxford. Jocelyn Bell Burnell has won numerous prizes during her distinguished career. These include the Albert Mitchelson Medal of the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia, 
the J. Robert Oppenheimer Memorial Prize from the Center for Theoretical Studies at the University of Miami, the Beatrice Tinsley Prize of the American Astronomical Society, the Herschel Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society, the Gold Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society, and the Royal Medal of the Royal Society. <laughs> she served as the first woman president of the Institute of Physics. She was appointed commander of the Order of the British Empire for services to astronomy, and subsequently promoted to dame commander of the Order of the British Empire. She has been elected a fellow of the Royal Society and the Royal Society of Edinburgh, where she served as president. Most importantly, of course, she was elected to honorary membership of the Royal Irish Academy in 2012. In 2016, the Institute of Physics renamed their award for early career female physicists, the Jocelyn Bell Burnell Medal and Prize. From her school days, Jocelyn has been an active Quaker and served as clerk of the sessions of Britain yearly meetings in 1995, 96 and 1997. She also served as clerk of the Central Executive Committee of Friends World Committee for consultation from 2008 to 2012. Jocelyn served on the Quaker Peace and Social Witness Testimonies Committee, which produced Engaging with the Quaker Testimonies, a toolkit in February 2007. In 2013, she gave a James Backhouse lecture, which was subsequently published as a monograph entitled A Quaker Astronomer Reflects. Can a scientist also be religious? in which Burnell reflects about how cosmological knowledge can be related to what the Bible, Quakerism, or Christian faith states. She is a prolific lecturer and has always been active in public engagement. She lists popularizing astronomy as one of her leisure interests. Throughout her long and productive life, Jocelyn Bell Burnell has truly embodied the aims of the Royal Irish Academy in promoting academic excellence, independence, and academic freedom. Jocelyn was chair of the Strategic Plan Committee for the Royal Irish Academy Strategic Plan 2019 to 2023 and delivered an academy discourse on astronomy and poetry in November 2020. Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell is a most worthy recipient of the Academy's highest honour, the Cunningham Medal. I'd now like to invite Jocelyn to the podium to say a few words. So thank you very much to the Academy for this generous award. And thank you especially to the people or person who took the trouble to do the nomination. We've all got plenty to do without thinking about who should get awards and, and making them happen. So thank you to those people or person. It is very good to be here again, as has been mentioned. Uh, the last time I was at this podium was presenting the strategic plan. And I have to say the audience was a bit more cautious on that occasion. Uh, but it is also great to be doing things in person again. It's really, really wonderful. And my congratulations to Mary on your term as president. A slight word of warning. Um, I was president of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and my successor got in a bit of a mess and suddenly there was a six month gap in the presidency and I got recalled. <laughs> so, I don't know who the next president is, but I wish them the very best of health and no issues, and may you see your whole term out with great pleasure and enthusiasm and success. As has been alluded to in the citation, quite a lot of my academic life has been determined by the fact that I'm female, starting with 
not getting to do science at school in Lurgan, County Armagh. Um, I have to say, once I did get to do science, we did physics that first term. There were three girls doing science, and the teacher made us sit right up against his desk because clearly we were dynamite. I think we were the first girls ever to do science in that school. We did physics the first term, and I came top in the exam. The question was, the, the, the question where I lost some marks was, what is the speed of light? And almost on automatic pilot, I wrote down 186,000 miles per second. We worked in old-fashioned units at that time. And then for the first time in my life, looked at that answer and thought, that's very big, and changed miles per second to miles per hour. <laughs> right first time is often the, the thing to remember. But it is a very good practice for scientists to look at their answer. Just don't do it for the first time on a critical occasion. But again, quite a lot of my life has been determined by the fact that I've been one of the few women doing things. And uh, I have a long list of these, but the one that perhaps I will cite to you is, as an undergraduate in Glasgow, as well as doing physics and maths, we had to do some other subjects. And, you know, some from this group and some from that group. And I opted to do geology. It's a fantastic subject. And to do it in Scotland is really, really interesting because the geology there is pretty diverse. And I did extremely well without really trying, came top in the exam, was enjoying it and thought, hmm, maybe I should be a geologist, not an astronomer. And went to see the professor, whom I will not name, who was the head of the geology department and said, I was thinking of changing to geology. Now I've picked up both your first year prizes. And he said, no, not for women. <laughs> I think his thinking was that most geologists at that time were employed in the Burmese jungle, exploring, looking for oil. And of course, there's no women's toilets in the Burmese jungle, therefore women couldn't be geologists. But I did discover that at some other universities, women who were good at geology were encouraged to stick with it. So I didn't change to geology, I stuck with astronomy. And again, the imposter syndrome was coming through. Um, I was the only female in a class of 50 doing honours. And it was the, quote, tradition that when a woman entered the lecture theatre in Glasgow, Everybody hammered the desks, stamped. 49 lads doing that is quite impressive. Um, but I knew what I wanted to do, so I knew I had to stick with it. And again, turning up at Cambridge University, where I did not expect to get in. Um, you'll have been aware of Boris, I guess, here. Yeah. It was full of young men like Boris. <laughs> Public school, white, affluent, full of self-confidence, never a doubt about their right to be in Cambridge and never a doubt about their brilliance. And I'm coming from the north and west and I've got a funny accent. And There were very, very few women in Cambridge at that time. And I note also, particularly see in retrospect, that the few women dons that there were were very, very anxious that we, the women students, behaved because the position of women in Cambridge University was not established. And if too many of us misbehaved, some of the crusty old male dons would say, no more women. And that would be the end of women in Cambridge. So it's been a very interesting time. <laughs> to be a scientist, to be in the University of Cambridge, to be involved in things. And I've appreciated my opportunities to be associated with this academy. As was mentioned, um, I chaired the strategy committee, I think we called ourselves, a few years ago, uh, and presented from this podium with rather more anxiety. 
There's lots I could talk about. You don't want to be here for hours and hours and hours, so I will desist and say once again, thank you very, very much to the Academy. Thank you especially to the people who put the nomination and how very good, ma'am, to be here for your final meeting. So wish you very well as well. Thank you. So thank you very much, Jocelyn, and I, I think you raised the issue of diversity, which has been, um, particularly under Mary's presidency, has been one of the big priorities of the Academy, um, and hopefully will be, um, whoever your successor, that we will continue. Uh, it's a very slow um, development or evolution, as you probably know, um, and, and the Athena Swan um, program um, has had a great deal for it to be developed in the universities. Um, so I'd just like to finish by thanking everybody who's participated today, particularly Mary Canning and Breen McCraw. I think we've discussed a lot of issues here tonight, and um, some of them, as we've spoken of, very grim and very concerning for universities. But also, I think, on the positive side, the fact that so many people are engaged with this debate is actually a very positive development. Um, and again, hopefully the Academy can continue um, discussing the whole issue of academic freedom and the autonomy of universities into the future. Um, but I think Mary has made a very good foundation for that whole debate through her presidency. So thank you very much. You can all um, join us now in a reception um, in the members and council room. So thank you. <laughs>